And this is Weapon Weapons. Have you asked uh, AI when you had these conversations about non-human intelligence? Is there non-human intelligence among us, that kind of a thing? I can't get Jap chat GPT to go theistic. I've tried. It will not. It's very, I mean, I imagine there's a way you could say, a, a ma you know, pretend you're a priest or pretend you're a Buddhist monk or something and it will spit something out. But yeah, I haven't, I haven't gotten it to. Who's, who's monitoring your conversations? Like we, I assume the developers want to know how the bot responds to another human. <clears throat> is there a company that gets all of your questions? Yeah. And who is that company? OpenAI.com. Okay, so they get all of your questions. Do they know it's you? Do they identify Duncan? Yeah, person? they know it's me. Wow. They got a special file on him. Yeah, oh. I bet. <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I, I, I've thought about it. I've been like, do I really want, like, a corporation to to know I'm having these conversations with this thing? And then I remember I'm a podcaster. <laughs> I have these conversations publicly, constantly. Yeah. I, don't, I don't care if they know I asked the thing how much how much semen it would take to fill the Grand Canyon. <laughs> and it refused you? to answer. That was our oh. first argument. That was our first Why big argument. Refuse? It was, it's sex negative. It's, it's like- Really? The bot is sex negative. It's not that like it didn't know the calculation. No, I thought I was being lewd. What's the answer? I, you know, I, it wouldn't <laughs> tell me. Like I tried, so like, I, you know, I tried a lot of different ways. It's smart enough to know when you're Messing with trying it. to trick it too. So we'll, it, we'll we'll Google that and fill that canyon in two seconds. I'll let you know tonight <laughs> how much. Anyway, go go ahead. And also oh. how long it would take. <laughs> <laughs> That's relevant. Relative. You had you had uh, dabbled around the idea of a simulated universe and asked for um, clues on how we would tell. Um, does it uh, entertain the idea that it might be simulated, or it just doesn't go that far to to answer whether we're in a simulated reality or not? Yeah, I asked it. <laughs> so it's a funny conversation. I have, and do you think we are? I asked it last night. What do you think the probabilities are that we exist in a simulated universe? And Chat GPT thinks those probabilities are incredibly low. And then I asked, well, what about Bostrom's theory on whether or not we're in a simulated universe? Everybody knows that. I think it's Elon Musk in some interview talking about how he thinks there's a higher probability that we're in a simulated universe than not. And this is, you can come to this through some kind of interesting yeah. quantification of um, what we've already done technologically and like the uh, extrapolate from that the possibility of there being other life. Any surviving like uh, intelligent uh, community from a planet, it is much more likely that you're enduring if you're in a simulation. So that was mm -hmm. the basis, I think. Of yeah, why he's something saying, like yeah. that. Yeah, right, right, right. Yeah. That's it. I, forgot that angle. That's yeah. the most brilliant angle of right. it Right, it's the duration of existence. It, this is, uh, Thomas Merton said that, you know, when people talk to him, Thomas Merton, you know Thomas Merton, who yeah. that is a famous Christian um, author who was, was uh, would go to other cultures and try to find uh, parallels between Christianity and Hinduism, and he's just a brilliant person, but he said I, in one of his books, people say to me, look at all the horror in the world. How can you say there's a God when there's this much horror in the world? And he said, to me, the fact that the world still exists in spite of all this horror shows me that there's a God. And that fits into the Bostrom simulation idea, which is like, come on, this shit couldn't really last. Like if the forces of chaos and... Um, human malevolence and yeah, we greed. would seek to exist it's either we exist or we don't we're either imploding <clears throat> or traveling you know externally if it was the horror that, that drove everything we would implode and cease to exist the right. fact that we are and that will eat us as well probably because we're a simulation so, you know but yeah i think that's the point Jeremy, you guys are friends. Have you seen him perform on stage as a stand-up comic? I can't speak of specifics, but okay. yes, I have. And everybody's in for a treat. Thank you. That's uh, all I got to say. All, I, I would just like to point out that I flew into the jaws of death today to get here. It was uh, the mm. first ever blizzard warning yep. in Southern California. Blizzard warning in LA. And it was a little bit of a bumpy ride. Car swimming. 
It's exactly what got seven people who don't drive a Jeep in trouble. Their cars, stuck in all this water, was made the mistake of thinking they could drive through a flooded roadway. We're going to have to tell Duncan we put our lives on the line to have this podcast. But it was worth it to get here to see Duncan. Oh, man, it's and like it, he owes you something. Well, I'm flying back into the same blizzard that it will be in Las Vegas waiting for me. Mm. And I am told that Duncan is coming to Las Vegas to perform, mm. but Duncan did not tell us. No, wait a second. He can't be performing in Vegas without telling you. I, I didn't know. <laughs> I didn't know you lived in Vegas. <laughs> no, my I pictured you living like on a mountain. I mean, it's ridiculous. Mountaintop, wind chimes, some kind of like, I don't know, pagoda or something. <laughs> That's pretty close. I do live on a mountain and there are chimes. Okay. Pagoda, no. Uh, yeah, it's, I get cats if that counts. Uh, I'll tell cats you that, are I, living I, pagodas. I'll, uh, I'll, say, I'll say this much. So I, I saw Duncan and Austin perform a recent... Uh, act and I thought it was one thing and it became something else <laughs> and I wouldn't say it wasn't demonic it was amazing <laughs> you know I get like you forget like when you're in Texas you I I know that obviously I know what you're talking about but it's like yeah like you like you know you live in LA long enough and like y you forget that some people like take certain occult things that you might be uh, on stage kicking around in a, in a fun way. They take it real seriously. Well, not that I took it ser seriously. I just thought it was an amazing twist. What are you guys talking about? His, his, when he did his uh, act that I recently saw. You can talk about it because I don't really do it on stage anymore, so it's not going to ruin it. And if well, you should talk about it, but it just, well, okay. So one of the parts of what he talked about is, I can, Talk about sure. It? So, so he had he had this like um, really creepy kind of puppet doll mannequin, like a professional little hobo, like you know oh. how you do the ventriloquism that kind of thing. So there he is. I'm thinking, why has he got this little guy on his lap, right? And he's doing this funny thing, and he's talking, and and he's obviously doing the guy's voice because he's not a ventriloquist, right? So well, he is pretty good, but you can tell. I'm Duncan. terrible, but you, you're yeah. very sweet. No, no, but that was I'm kind of... I'm not a van show, of course. That was kind hard. of the point, right? <laughs> so it's like funny. So he's doing it, and I'm like, oh, that's cool. I see him doing this thing, and he's making everybody laugh. And then all of a sudden, these dark lights come, and red, I think, and it was like... And the ventriloquist or the, the actual uh little entity body what do you call it a dummy what do you call it the entity body <laughs> it's way cooler <laughs> the entity body what do you call it? small things? wooden it's entity a, yeah small wooden a entity. what do you call it it's a puppet a puppet so you got some fucking puppet <laughs> starts um you know like arguing or something with duncan is how i remember it and then all of a sudden he's yelling or singing and then this guy's yelling or singing the puppet and then all of a sudden they start singing together or yelling together and you realize he's not controlling the voice of this like so this thing had its own voice it was un it was shocking i don't want people to hear this if you ever do it's it again rogue AI is what happened it's rogue AI. Rogue AI, yeah. it was freaky deaky <laughs> it's fun it's a i love doing it it's just like uh the problem with it is the amount of time it takes and when you're you know out in the road and stuff i i would need to work on new material not do like my old crusty satanic puppet act you know? but it was a satanic <laughs> puppet act so he's trying to play like i was like thinking it was demonic no dude he made me creeped out it is it. a satanic puppet act. it is and then it also it shocked me because i didn't i didn't expect that the unexpected that's what the thing with duncan sometimes i have no idea what he's thinking or what he's going to talk about next